all the weather conditions I've shot in, fog is by far and away my favourite. Now while it is a little bit more difficult to prepare and predict, scenes which look pretty boring during the day when there is no fog can look really atmospheric and interesting when it is a foggy morning or a foggy night. So in this episode, I'm going to discuss a couple of ways to prepare and take better photos in the fog. Now before we start, this episode here is sponsored by me and all the photos you see in this episode have been edited using my cinematic preset pack. The link to that is down below. Also, you can really help support this channel by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, remember to hit the subscribe as well. So in my experience, the most important factor when it comes to taking good photos in the fog is planning and predicting it. Now, there's no perfect way to predict the fog. I've lost count of the amount of times I've woken up at 5 a.m. only to be greeted by perfectly clear skies. But there are a couple things you can look out for and apps you can use to predict it. So firstly, without getting too technical about the weather, fog usually occurs in the early morning or late night when there's really high humidity and there's little to no wind. So when I see and feel these conditions, it's an indicator to me to check out the weather app to see if there's gonna be fog in the morning. Here in the UK, I like to check the Met Office website. In my experience, that's been the most accurate way to predict whether there's gonna be fog in the morning. They usually pull out some kind of yellow or amber warning if it's gonna be very foggy. Also, I highly recommend having a plan of what you wanna shoot and where you want to shoot. Sometimes in the morning when you haven't slept properly, and it's freezing cold outside, it can be pretty difficult to spontaneously decide where and what you wanna take photos of. So as I said, with fog, hard to predict, but uh, have a plan from beforehand where you wanna go and what you wanna see. Finally, check the weather conditions and use your weather apps before you do set that alarm for 5 a.m. All right, so onto the subject to look out for when there is foggy conditions. One thing probably worth noting is fog is one of nature's best special effects and pretty much whatever you shoot when it is foggy will look more interesting by default. It's a bit like shooting in the snow or on the heavy rainfall. Whatever you capture under those conditions instantly just looks more interesting. But one of the best things about shooting in the fog is how short your viewing distances are. So when you're shooting long roads or if you're shooting train tracks or you're shooting bridges, the ends of the roads and the train tracks get lost in the fog. And this can make for really interesting and mysterious looking shots. So as you can see from these examples here, the ends of the bridges can't be seen. Now, if I capture the same shot during a bright day, it will be a pretty boring picture. But under foggy conditions, it gives it a completely different look. And this shot up here now is another example of that. During the day, it's just a field. There's nothing too interesting about it. But under foggy conditions, you're capturing a person walking by, it creates a silhouette, and instantly, it's a more interesting photo. So when it comes to selecting subjects and areas to shoot in, look for those long roads, places with bridges, or go to a train station to see the tracks. And as I said earlier, pretty much anything in the fog is gonna look better. This includes landscapes and cityscapes, as you can see in this example here. So let's talk camera settings when you're shooting in the fog. From my experience, I found that foggy conditions can sometimes trick the camera sensors to underexposing your images. And when you fix it in post, the images can come out pretty noisy. So what I tend to do is I'm either shooting in manual or I still shoot in aperture priority, but with the exposure compensation dial, I slightly overexpose. And I'm using a histogram to judge whether the image is correctly exposed rather than relying on the screen at the back of the camera or what I'm seeing through the viewfinder. Secondly, autofocusing doesn't work as well. This is because the fog reduces the amount of contrast and lots of autofocusing systems do rely on the contrast between the subject and the background to judge the distance. So if you're having trouble with that, move into manual focusing. And the same goes for white balance. The foggy conditions can really mess with the sensors. So as always, shoot in raw, and that just makes it so much easier to get into post and change the white balance. Whereas if you're shooting on JPEG, the white balance is pretty much baked into the image and it's compressed. So you have far less leeway when it comes to editing in Lightroom or Capture One or whatever app you're using. All right, so finally, let's talk about which camera gear to use in foggy conditions. Now it's worth remembering when it is foggy that there's lots of humidity out there, there's lots of moisture in the air. So I tend to always use weather sealed cameras and weather sealed camera lenses like the X-T4 and the Fujifilm 16-55 to f2.8. Also, I like to use zoom lenses for a number of reasons. 
Firstly, it's not foggy that often here in London, so when it is foggy, I wanna capture different types of images using a zoom lens where I can get wide angle, or if I'm seeing a subject in the distance, I can zoom right in. And to wrap it up, make sure you do dress warm. When it is foggy out there and there's so much moisture in the air, you'll be surprised how cold you can get. So gloves, hat, thick pair of socks, and some good waterproof shoes, and you should be good to go. But yeah, that's about it for today's episode. If you have any tips of your own for shooting in the fog, drop them down below in the comments and I'll make sure to get back to you. A huge thanks for watching and supporting this channel as always. Stay safe and I'll catch you in the next one.